following is an example of an exercise that can be used in the classroom. You do not have to attempt this exercise. Play about two stanzas of three of the poems that follow. Learners immediately say the tones that come to mind, without thinking too much about it. Learners may use terms such as playful, sad, happy, expressing boredom, frustration and outrage to indicate tone. The possible tone or tones of each poem is provided as a guideline for teachers. The poems are as follow. Chocolate makes me jump and shout. Chocolate makes my eyes bug out. I heard the king call from his car. My kingdom for a chocolate bar. Send all the troops that we can muster to seize a chocolate peanut cluster. Make sure it's chocolate in my shake and in the cookies that you bake. Lemon, vanilla, butterscotch, lime. Give me chocolate every time. From Who Said Vanilla by Grandpa Tucker. I wandered through each chartered street, near where the chartered Thames does flow. And mark in every face I meet, marks of weakness, marks of woo. In every cry of every man, in every infant's cry of fear, in every voice, in every band, the mind-forged manacles I hear. From London by William Blake Daffodils, William Wordsworth I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high over vales and hills, and all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils, beside the lake, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze, continuous as the stars that shine and twinkle on the milky way. They stretched in never-ending line, along the margin of a bay. Ten thousand saw I at a glance, tossing their heads in sprightly dance. From Daffodils by William Wordsworth Onomatopoeia is the use of words that imitate the sounds they describe. Henderson Day and Waller, 1993 Click here to find out how onomatopoeia is used. Onomatopoeia looks like a light-hearted device of poetry, but it is really quite effective in its function. Click here to read a poem that uses this device. Gobble, quack and cackle, Tommy Twitter from the bird ounced, Bows braying on donkey down, Crow, caw, Pigeon coo, bull bellow. From Under Milk Wood by Dylan Thomas. Notice the noisy liveliness of the scene described above. Action and energy run abound. Take note of how the words in italics echo the sound they describe. For example, the cry of a crow sounds like caw. Onomatopoeia makes poetry more creative, imaginative, and a joy to read. To teach onomatopoeia, it may be prudent to move from easier activities to difficult ones. Click on the links below for examples of worksheets that can be used in the classroom. Listen and guess the words that reflects each sound you hear. Scene one, Apple, take one. Feedback. 
Note that more than one answer is possible. Below is a guideline for teachers. Chewing of cracker. Plate landing on the floor. Throwing pebble in water. Sound made in car crash or accident. Machine gun going off. Car braking. Door closed forcefully. Sound made by a hungry stomach. Baby rattle being shaken. Friction made by clothes blowing in the wind. Talking in low voice. Clapping of two hands. Bomb. Old wood stair being stepped on. Lion. Identify the use of onomatopoeia in the poem that follows. As a guide for teachers, the various instances of onomatopoeia in the poem have been highlighted. Click here for the poem. Hear the sledges with the bells, silver bells. What a world of merriment their melody foretells. How they tinkle, tinkle, tinkle in the icy air of night. While the stars that over sprinkle, all the heavens seem to twinkle. With the crystalline delight, keeping time, 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 in a sort of runic rhyme. To the tintinabulation that so musically wells, from the bells, 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 bells. Bells, 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 from the jingling and the tinkling of the bells. On the future, how it tells, of the rapture that impels, to the swinging and the ringing of the bells, bells, bells. Theme is the totality of meaning that is conveyed through the play. Whether that meaning emerges primarily from the setting, plot, character, language, or point of view. Henderson, Day and Waller, 1993. Theme also refers to the major ideas or moral precepts in a particular work. Henderson, Day and Waller, 1993. It can also be related to issues and problems prevalent in a society. Although plays often elucidate problems, they do not always advocate solutions. As in poems, themes in plays should be substantiated using the details or examples in the play itself, or else readers' opinions will lack validity or conviction. Most plays contain or relay several themes. Click on the links below for an excerpt from A Doll's House by Hendrik Hipson and a short discussion on the excerpt. 
Read the excerpt from Henry Ibsen's A Doll's House. That is just it. You have never understood me. I have been greatly wronged. Torvald. First by Papa and then by you. What? By us two? By us two? who have loved you better than anyone else in the world? You have never loved me. You have only thought it pleasant to be in love with me. Nora, what do I hear you saying? It is perfectly true, Torvald. When I was at home with Papa, he told me his opinion about everything. And so I had the same opinions, and if I deferred from him, I concealed the fact, because he would not have liked it. He called me his doll child, and he played with me just as I used to play with my dolls. And when I came to live with you... What sort of an expression is that to use about our marriage? I mean that I was simply transferred from Papa's hands into yours. You arranged everything according to your own taste, and so I got the same taste as yours. Or at least I pretended to. I'm really not quite sure which. I think sometimes the one and sometimes the other. When I look back on it, it seems to me as if I had been living here like a poor woman, just from hand to mouth. I have existed merely to perform tricks for you, Torvald. But you would have it so. You and Papa have committed a great sin against me. It is your fault that I have made nothing of my that life. That is just it. You have never understood From me. A doll's I've house been greatly wrong, Ibsen. The theme found in the excerpt of A Doll's House by Henrik Ibsen is deception. Nora lives a life, a deceit to assert her feminine identity, in a patrical society, represented by her father and husband Helmer. Note the following clues that are related to the theme of deception of Nora in a patrical society that does not allow for feminine identity or individuality. Click here to view the clues that support the themes. You have never understood me. Infers to feminine identity. I have been greatly wronged. Torvald, first by Papa, and then by you, infers to patrical society and its restriction. And so I got the same tastes as yours, or at least I pretended to, infers to deception to assert feminine identity. And if I deferred from him, I concealed the fact, infers to deception to assert feminine identity.